35, 36 years of cycles. And who knows how many pads she may use during that period of time. So I've already talked about what those pads can do as far as exposure, as far as toxins, and not only that, but the natural toxins of the bacteria that's in her body that's not being disposed of properly. Well, the pad that we have, the jewel pad, it has several things that are going to help, okay? And I'm gonna go through each one. First, let's talk about the environment. One of the aspects of the current pads that are out there now is that a lot of those pads have plastic, okay? And that plastic gets thrown into either the sewer system or into the waters, and it's years upon years before those products will be broken down. And so we now realize how much of a danger an environmental hazard plastics are. There are no plastics associated with our pads. Everything with our pads is natural. Everything with our pads is biodegradable. So we don't have to worry about it. The pad itself is environmentally friendly. So let's get that one out the way because there are a lot of people where that is a main concern. Now, let's talk about the actual health benefit to the woman. What is a pad supposed to do? A pad is supposed to absorb the blood and it's supposed to pull it away from the body. The current pads don't do that. The blood goes on to the pad and the blood sits right there. So that blood is there, as I mentioned earlier, with the bacteria. The jewel pad, when that blood and fluids, remember now it's not just blood that's coming out of there, okay? You also have some urine, you have sweat, okay? There's a lot that's coming onto that pad, but it's being pulled away from the body. That pad is dry, and that is extremely important. Because as we know, that moisture, what causes yeast to grow? Yeast needs moisture, darkness, and heat. What is going on in a woman's cycle? Moisture, darkness, and heat. So we are now able to pull that moisture away we know that the pads being cotton, okay, are cooler than these pads that have these plastic backings because when you have a plastic backing, guess what? There's no breathability. There's no breathability. That heat comes out and where does it go? It just stays right there or it builds up, okay? It has no place to go. Our pads are fenestrated. In other words, the heat goes through. Okay, so there's no accumulation of heat. Now, the main ingredient that I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about, which is the big hoopla, and when I say the big hoopla, I'm not talking about just the big hoopla with respect to our pads. It's the big hoopla around the world. Graphene, where two physicists won a Nobel Prize in 2010, and all kind of terms and words are being used to describe it. The wonder material, the 21st century material. The bottom line is there's so many things happening with graphene that you can't keep up with it. You cannot keep up with it, okay? Anything from bulletproof vests, golf balls, the lithium batteries. I just, I have a little, I call it a little electric golf cart. I have an electric vehicle. And I didn't know this until today when I was reading about it, that one thing about those lithium batteries is that they can get hot enough and with the oxygen can cause a combustion and cause a fire. They're now looking at putting graphene into the lithium batteries to prevent those things from happening. Graphene is a word that probably none of us knew about before the last two weeks. I didn't know about it and I've been in science for God knows how many years but it's nothing more than a byproduct of something we've all heard about, and that is graphite, the pencil, okay? It's all part of carbon atoms. Diamonds, 
coal, graphite, graphene, carbon. Carbon, okay, one of the elements. The thing with graphene is it is one atom thick. It is by far the thinnest material known to man and has more strength than anything known to man. So you can imagine that combination, something thin and strong. You can only see the myriad of ideas that people are just running with. Okay. Next month, Mr. Crump and I are going to be attending an American Graphene Summit in Washington, D.C., where that's all they're going to talk about. It's graphene. And, and matter of fact, probably most of the people at this summit will be international, global. We don't think there's going to be anyone there speaking about dual sanitary napkin. And so for us, this is going to be an opportunity to let people from around the world know what we are doing, what we are doing to help women. So I'm, I'm excited about that. The second day of that conference, we go to the Capitol. Okay, and that's where we meet with congressmen. Now, I'm gonna be honest, the, most of the people attending this summit are there to, to get their industrialized aspects of graphene. You know, IBM, Samsung, I mean, you name the companies. Okay, they're going to be there because they're talking about major. But we're gonna to try to use that opportunity to meet with two young ladies, two congresswomen out of New York, okay, Carolyn Maloney, and Grace Meg. And these are two congresswomen who have been trying their hardest to get bills passed. So we are aware of what's in those sanitary napkins. As a matter of fact, Congresswoman Meg has a bill out that sanitary napkins should be available to everyone. Any woman who's incarcerated should have access. Any person in a federal building should be able to go into the bathroom and have sanitary napkins. Any homeless woman who needs a sanitary napkin, it should be available. That's the bill that she put out January of this year. So I'm saying this to say that it is internationally understood that things have to change. And we, we are a part of that movement. And I am excited to be a part of that movement. So going back to graphene. So graphene has the ability, with respect to the sanitary napkins, to actually cut bacteria, just slice right through the wall. Okay, and if you cut through the wall of the bacteria, it's dead. So when that graphene on that pad is sitting there, and that bacteria is coming out of the vagina, which it will, you now have something that is going to cleave and destroy that bacteria. That's good. So that it cannot cause some of the problems that I just mentioned that happen to women where the bacteria is either multiplied from being on those pads or not really being pulled away, which you see with the conventional pads. And that is an ability that is also being used, graphene, because it is so small and it is so specific, they're actually looking at graphene being used to treat cancer cells, okay? Because they feel it has that ability because we're talking an atom, it is so small, that they can direct graphene to do so much. They're using it now, for using it for diabetes testing, some of the machines, Okay, so you're gonna hear more and more about graphene, but our 